Hi guys, and welcome to this week's Q&A. I got a lot of questions on, um, on this thing, so I decided that this week I'm gonna do it uh, this way instead of the live version, and we will go back to the live version uh, next week. Hopefully my internet is gonna be better as well. I just arrived in Budapest. <laughs> so, without further ado, I'm gonna find and read these. Um, we start here. Dear Lisa, this is perhaps something that you can tell me about. For 20 years ago now, I experienced a complete impossible situation. The frequency of my right side of my mind is being taken over by the name of something else. Bit in short. So that I after a while go crazy, desperate, flying into walls, shout out loud and must stop, etc. My breath is taking away, the heart rhythm out uh, gets disturbed. I cannot let the note follow through. As I have tried and tried everything possible, every every possible way to solve this, from seeing it lovely to becoming furious, um, because it does not belong to me. It came a, they came about a man that I met 25 years ago, a new age course leader. We are not in contact anymore, but it seems that we are still connected. A core. And not one that still served me. The name that has taken my brain is the name of his ex-wife. There was an entanglement of lines in the life field of both parties. But I think the damage is on my side of the two. It must stop. How? With love and respect. Wow, <laughs> that's quite a situation and quite a question. Um, let me just look at it one more time, just to feel it, because reading in English and all this is kind of double. Uh, 20 years ago, I had an experience that was crazy, it was flying into a wall, screaming out loud, my breath was taking away, and I'm how do you I cannot, no, follow through, try to try it. Okay, how is she looking? When we experience situation in our lives where we have the feeling of completely surrendering, we have the feeling of giving in to something that might be bigger than ourselves, And this happens for uh, a bigger amount of people who uh, follow leaders. <laughs> we can tend to find ourselves in situations where we are so open that we take over a part of something that may not belong to ourselves. If I look into what you have been through, then the situation itself was pretty crazy and and the way that um, uh, the, yeah, the whole environment and how you were so open and became part of this and something was taking over, another identity, etc. It doesn't really matter what it is. What matters is that this moment had so much influence, this moment uh created a big amount of memory within your core system so what you need to do is that you need to look into the trauma release of your own within that moment uh, to understand what it was representing for you and um, to understand what the energy of that is representing for you still if I look into her energy or the being's energy, um, I would not say it's hers because she's not, <laughs> she's not like she's evil. <laughs> but the thing is that um, that everything felt so overwhelmed, that everything was a shock and the struggle and the anger. And the best thing that you can do is truly looking into the self forgiveness. And looking into cutting core, maybe even talking with this part. So talking with this part of her to understand uh, why it was there. What did it want to represent? Why is it still a vibrationally match to you? And that is the real question. Is it a vibrationally match? Um, and if not, 
you're ready to let it go. 20, 25 years, that's a very long time to carry something. Um, try it out and please let me know how it goes. We have more and more of these people coming up with these split personalities or taking over by beings. This doesn't mean that any of you are crazy. This is just basically because you have left your body too much open and being a vibrational match to a lower vibration that has a voice <laughs> that you feel more stronger and intimidating than your own. A good, good thing is to work on your self-love, your self-strength, your self-power. Because when you empower the love of your heart, nothing else can truly exist in that environment for long. That means that if a something dark would go inside of you and you fulfill your body with the vibration of love, the darkness cannot survive for long and, and must see it search out. Okay, I hope this works for you. Next question. Actually, Elisa, uh, I have this for the Q&A. Um, I fell over nothing and broke my rib six weeks ago. And somehow now I'm wrecked. Uh, now I re cracked them. <laughs> Sorry, my English. Now I re cracked them and I'm so much pain like when I did it the first time. I just feel like they will never heal. I haven't been to the hospital because I'm scared to go, but I'm in so much pain. Do you see what I've done? I was trying to find the metaphysic reason, but I just don't know what is what um, at this time. Uh, so thank you in advance. Broken ribs. <laughs> this is always a good one. I bent my ribs so many times, you cannot believe it. And it hurts like crazy. So uh, even if you broke it first time and and you um, you push them. What happens with ribs, with a rib case, is that if they are bent, it hurts. It hurts even more than if they are broken. So you have not necessarily rebroken them. You you may just have bent them a little bit, and the pressure uh, is what you feel. What is really good about ribs is that uh, most of the times, so unless it's the chest bone, <laughs> which I broke, obviously. Uh, even then, so most of the time they don't do anything about broken ribs because they, they tend to grow back together in perfect alignment as long as you, of course, take your care and such. If I look into it uh, within you, you needed a break, not only for the world, but also for yourself. This is a really hard way of doing it, but it's really to take that time to look inside of yourself and get to know yourself better, get to know yourself better on a deeper level, really go to that core of that pain that has held you back for so long to truly understand it in order of letting it go. I see this little wave of loneliness as well. Uh, they need to be addressed and need to be acknowledged. I hope this will help you. And as I see it, I don't see them as re -cracked. I see them in a healing process, uh, but it hurts. <laughs> it hurts like crazy. Okay, next one. You are so bright. I'm so wondering how you can shine so bright. I know it's a natural state of being, but I'm just wondering what you had to let go to be okay with being the light. I had to let go of the belief that I was something the devil had created. So for many years in my own life, I had a lot of self-doubt. I, I always felt that I was too much for the world with all my energy and flower powerness and not able to sit still on the table or whatever humans do, you know. So for me, uh, what I had to let go in order of being the light is realizing that I am it and that I have always been it. There is this part of me that no matter how dark the day seems, I always find a moment of lightness every single day. No matter how depressed I've been or how many times I woke up and wanted to kill myself, I, I always said, okay, you know what? Tapping out, you can always do, right? But 
If you find one reason to stay, you must let this go and tap into that, okay? So I did that every day. I woke up sometimes with the feeling of wanting to die, went for a run. And when I saw the sunshine, I thought, if you can shine one day more, so can I. And that for a long period of time was something to help me through. What I did after that, or I did at the same time, was I was looking into uh, why did I feel bad? Why did I have lower self-esteem sometimes? Why did I have this feeling of not being enough or being too much, very contradictorily at the same time? Um, and I just started to solve my traumas. I, I think the biggest thing for me is that I don't fear my feelings. I don't fear emotions. I don't fear going deep. Because for me, I'll never stay there. It's not a place for me to stay. It's a place for me to go. Go to resolve whatever is inside as a flow. And come back to the state of happiness and blissfulness in existence. I think the key is truly authenticity. Be authentic and trust the process that you're in. We are all part of God's shining light, but we all have colors. We're not supposed to shine the same or send the same image or have the same smile. We, we're supposed to show parts of this reality um, in order of helping to recreate a new place and in order of collecting this knowledge to our own soul stream and the universe that we were sent here for. So the very best we can do is fully accepting who we are, where we are, taking one step at a time, one day at a time. I hope this uh, helped you a bit. Okay, next one. What's up with these personal things? <laughs> so a personal thing came to my mind earlier today. You help people answer all of such uh, questions, all you answer and and all what you help people answer questions and all these things do you not get lonely in that who's helping you can we help you too oh this is so sweet it makes me it touched my heart <laughs> so um yeah i can feel lonely from time to time for sure and i i think for me for me, what I had to learn was to be okay with the feeling of loneliness because the second you are okay with it, it no longer controls you. Then you are just alone sometimes. But the feeling of loneliness, that longing um, can, can be very killing um, until the moment that you accept it. That you accept that it's a part of your path in one way or another. and and realize, re-realizing, this is how it is for me. I have to re-realize things <laughs> because apparently I forget. Re-realize that we are never alone. We are part of the whole. And once again, we're back to this thing about us having different roles to play. Um, and for me, often it feels like a big part of this road is very uh, alone but then i open my eyes out of my little bubble and realize how many beautiful souls that i am surrounded by how much love that i'm surrounded by and how much flow there actually is even that i can have the illusion of being still even <laughs> like i fly to budapest you know and everybody with their corona mask and all this and uh, and then on the way out, the 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 what do you call it? The person who goes around with the with the food and stuff in the in the plane, just took his hands out and just gave me a big hug and said, "Take care of yourself and be safe." I just got so happy. <laughs> I was like, oh, "That doesn't matter. The world is great," you know. So, I think. Um, I think the best way um, 
I don't even know if I'm answering this question correctly. <laughs> but what I would love is to be able to help people help themselves. And what I would love is to help people see their own greatness and to understand their own value because as more you are centered in yourself as easier it is for me to exist as more you acknowledge your own feelings your own needs your own world your own color as more easy it is for me and the newborn children to be in theirs their colors their own being their own existence and i truly believe that this is a part of the creation that we are in right now that Oh, we need to be more authentic. We need to stand up in our own colors and the world is about to change. We cannot remain the same. We need to flow with this change. We need to be part of this movement because there's no stopping it now. <laughs> so um, the very best thing that we all can do is being true to ourselves and our hearts and our roles and um, I have been questioning myself if, if I should do something else, if, if it would even matter what I'm doing. <laughs> and the truth is that with, deep within my heart, I just know that even I can do like a million other stuff, it's not my purpose. So I just follow my heart and I want to help the world change or just see their own greatness and um, yeah <laughs> I think this is I don't know if this was like straight answer to your question but uh, thank you for asking it very much let's see if there's anything else what does 777 means to me Okay, so all these double numbers is called angels numbers or lucky numbers or whatever. And for me, the, when I look at it, it doesn't have one specific meaning. You always have to ask yourself, what does it mean to me? It doesn't help that you ask me what it means for you. Because <laughs> I, I can tell you something, but it is always um, whatever you linked it to, whatever within your heart whatever emotion feeling uh, situation these numbers are linked to for you i for example saw two 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 a lot and one 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 and it's this is always these angelic uh, shifting one place to another connections new connections uh, kind of numbers um, but for me for the long time I, I didn't look it up or anything i just had that feeling of Okay, I am supported in where I am and where I'm going. Okay, I am not alone. We can do this together. Okay, now I'm entering a new shift. Something new is going on. So if I read this question and without answering your question, because I obviously do that a lot, not answering the questions, but purely looking into you, what you need to do is trust yourself more. You need to stand more in your own self. And whatever flows through your body, try to believe it. Not try, believe it. Believe in yourself. Believe, believe that you are worthy, that you have a voice and that voice counts more than anything else. Okay guys, this was it for this week's Q&A. Uh, please leave comments below. I am really curious what you felt about this one. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, for the next week or the next week again just send me an email we will look into it and i will go out and talk with some trees namaste Mwah.